Hi, today I'm going to show you how I created a character in Procreate. This is how you create your canvas size. You can choose inches or pixels. And here's your size, 300 dpi, and it shows you how many layers you will have. This is what your gallery looks like, and I already have my character here, so I'm going to choose this one. I like to keep my colors on one layer. So you can see my palette here on this layer and I do that so I can use the eyedropper tool to easily choose my colors. So this is where you create your color palette. You can do it compact or in cards. And in cards you can actually name each one of your colors like say Santi shirt, Santi pants, so you can refer to them quickly. I like the Procreate brushes. These are some that I do like that Procreate offers. Procreate has a lot of brushes down here. You can see that you just really have to play with them and see what you like for your personal preference. I actually like to buy brushes from artists because I think they're really good quality. One that I like is Max Ulichny and Lane's charcoal brushes. I do use the Artist Crayon that Procreate provides. I think it has a great texture. So again, it just depends on what you like. You have to experiment and see what you wanna use. So first I created a base layer and I'm gonna name it Santi Base Layer or Base Color. And I'm using my chunk hole brush that Lane from the Lane's charcoal brush set. That's my favorite brush. And I'm just gonna start to fill in the base. I'm lowering the opacity on my sketch so that you barely see the lines. So I can see them enough to be able to create the outline and basic shape of my character. But then I can still see my lines. I really like this brush because the way that it was created, it pulls in two different tones, two different colors into one. So you don't have one flat color that you're painting. And I think that looks more like traditional paint because sometimes it will do that. Also, I just like the look of it. So it, again, there's a lot of experimentation that goes into this. This is one way that I work, but I also like to try new things. So you have to do that as well. And now I'm just using the selection tool to quickly fill in some areas. So even when I use the selection tool, I then come back with my brush along the edge and give it that soft edge that I like. So again, use the selection tool. You can set that up in your gesture settings. I use the three finger swipe. That's what I've set up in my gestures to pull up my menu so that I have my cut paste. And here I'm just dropping colors into the selection. You can actually save the size of your brush. You just hold down on that little white line and then hit the plus button. And then that will actually save the size of the brush that you like because you can make the brush small, larger, smaller. And I go back and forth, you'll see. And then you see me touch on that little line where I saved it for the skinnier line. And then that gives me that size that I had before 
to be able to give my shape that soft edge quality that I like and to add some more detailed areas. So one thing you can also do is if you hold a spot and then draw, you can get a straight line and move it around. You can also do the same thing with the circle. So if you make a circle, hold it at the end and touch on the side, it gives you a perfect circle and you can make it larger or smaller. And sometimes I use this for eyes, but again, I like the traditional look. So I don't always use this, but I think it's a neat thing that Procreate provides. Okay, now I'm just going to speed this up a little bit and just continue filling in the base shape. And you want to get your shape as perfect as you can, as perfect as you like it, because every layer you're going to create from here, every layer that I create after this, with the exception of some details, I use a clipping mask. I'm going to show you what that is, because a clipping mask masks and adheres to the base layer, whatever layer you've clipped it to. So whatever shape that is, the next layer you make is going to take on that shape. So like when I, when I do the shirt, when I do the pants, when I do the shoes, everything is going to be a clipping mask to this basic shape. So that's why I'm working so hard right now to get this shape as perfect as I can. You can always go back and fix it. Like I see areas that stand out that I don't like, so go back and fix it. And again, I do like to experiment, so I might change something up. You know, this <clears throat> that's what's great about working with digital is that you can make changes so easily. Okay, so now we're going to start to add our clipping mask that I was talking about. So you click on clipping mask and then I'm going to name it shoes and we'll do, we'll start from the bottom, work our way up. I made it a little bit bigger. You can fill it in just like that, or you can use the selection tool. You've already done your base color, so you can just select this area, create the clipping mask, drop in the color, and then it's gonna take on that shape of the shoes that you created before. You do the same thing for the pants. Create clipping mask, make sure you choose your color, and then use the selection tool Drop in the color. Make sure you have the right color. <laughs> Make sure you're on the right layer. Make sure you're on the right layer again. And now drop in your color. Hooray! And then we'll do the same thing for the shirt. Use the selection tool. You can always take things out. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just select it the best you can. Drop in the color. Make sure you have the correct color. <laughs> Shirt. 
Next, we're gonna do the hair. And Santi has dark hair. So make sure we have that color selected. And I choose my Conti stick brush. That's also from the Lane's Charcoal Master Pack. And I like it because it looks like hair texture. I just like the looseness of it. The scruffiness. Okay, next we're gonna add the uh, shoe bottoms, which are a lighter color. And it helps if you put, you know, your shoe layer under your pant layer, your pants layer under your shirt layer so that you can draw on top of each layer if that makes sense, like think about if you're putting clothes on, your pants are kind of hanging over your shoes, your shirt's hanging over your pants. It just it makes a little more sense when you think of it that way. But yeah, I, I put Converse on Santiago. I call him Santi sometimes, that's his nickname, Santi. And uh, so he has blue Converse with the light blue bottom and then we'll give him the laces. So while we're slowly adding all the details. This is a quick way to color your lines. I don't always work this way, but this will make it a little bit faster for today. So we're gonna duplicate our layer and call it sketch, turn it off, and then we're gonna go to the lines, which was our lines that we originally did. And then we're gonna choose alpha lock. And what that will do is only color those lines. And so I'm gonna choose the color that I use for Santi lines. And I'm just gonna start with say the outline of him, like his ears and around his face. And I'm just gonna change the color of the lines. So I'm using like this lighter brown color to color it in and I'm gonna keep going and maybe use a different color for the pants because that's, you know, their blue jean. I have to actually fill the mouth. So I use this darker red color and just put it underneath the lines, another layer under the lines to fill in the mouth.
I feel like the shoes need a little more details, so I'm gonna work on that right now. If I want to add more detail to the shoes, I need to make sure that I create a layer that's on top of the lines. So that's what I'm gonna do right now and just work on the laces a little more and add some more details where necessary. And now I'm just cleaning up the final details on the line work, erasing where I feel like I don't really need the lines. Now we can add some shading. I like to use the Max Ulishny gouache flow and that's in his gouache max pack. And I just put it where I think it needs to go. I think about where the lighting might be coming from. If there's lighting from above, right? There's gonna be a little shadow under the chin. Shadows where the sleeves hang shadows on the ears. You can even brighten up the ears a little, shadow under the hair. And if you put down this shading and you think it's too dark, then you can hit the in on your layer and lower the opacity a little bit. And then that'll make the shading not quite so dark. Try not to get frustrated with the selection tool, just like in Photoshop, if you don't hold your pencil down the whole time or you accidentally tap a different spot, it's gonna give you a weird selection and procreate just like that. So just be patient with it, practice a little bit until you feel like you've got it. Just be patient with yourself. It takes a while to learn this program. It's very different from Photoshop. We're gonna add some texture to the pants and you have to create an alpha lock. And what that does is just adds texture right to that layer. The Artist Crayon is one that Procreate provides and it's a great textural brush. I'm doing the same thing to add the shading, except I'm using the gouache flow brush right now.
And that's about it. I hope you learned something and thank you for watching.